video it's another episode of bike fit tuesdays and today we're covering crank length what's the right crank length for you you already know mine's the the smallest length what length crank do you ride 170s 165 on the fixed gear hmm? i like a 165 i know because he was tiny this is basically what most of my customers look like when they come in here so the crank is the arm that the pedal attaches to, that your feet attach to. It mounts to a, a central spindle called the bottom bracket, which is an interesting name considering it's not the bottom of the bike and it's not a bracket either, but nonetheless. Crank length, they range from 165 millimeters in two and a half to five millimeter increments all the way up to 175. The, 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 the most commonly, commonly found sizes on bicycles are 165, 170, 172 and a half, and 175 in those exact increments. Um, Outside of the realms of the major manufacturers, there are um, smaller and larger sizes. Uh, I, I've been selling and using as, as crank length as, as small as 155 millimeters, particularly for small riders. And equally, uh, I mean, Shimano makes a Dura Race crank up all the way up to 180 millimeters. When I bought my first proper road bike, it came with 172.5. That's the most common size. Yep. Is that right for most people? My findings suggest otherwise, suggest no. Uh, if you consider the 172 and a half mil crank comes on basically most 52, 54, 56 centimeter bikes. So the kind of the average sizes of, of bikes. Uh, my best selling crank length by a very, very long way is 170, which doesn't sound like a lot, two and a half millimeter, uh, a two and a half millimeter reduction doesn't sound like a lot. But when you on, when you think about the the biomechanics of, of it, um, you know, like your your ferrule head inside your acer tabulums, your hip socket, uh, two and a half millimeters of in, uh, of internal rotation, uh, actually is quite a lot. And we we found that two and a half mil a two and a half mil reduction in crank length can yield performance improvements. So my instinctive response would be that 170 might be better, but I think this is the case with quite a lot of things in cycling. Uh, you know, things like handlebar width, everyone, everyone rides a 42, but actually 40 is our best selling. But that's that's for another time and another story entirely. I think there's quite a lot of talk about, in the media and uh, both online, about uh, reducing the crank. All the talk is generally, toward the, generally of the idea or of the opinion that shorter is better. and. Generally, my finding is that it's not always. 50% uh, of the time, I'd say, shorter tends to be better, but it depends on the function of the rider more than anything else. A, a more functional rider tend, will tend to be less influenced by crank length because the hip function will allow them to, to close the hips down better. So what are the problems associated with running a crank length that's too long? And it's quite a lot actually. I mean, so if you've got an individual with some sort of hip impingement, um, excessive crank length can go uh, as far as causing a rider to list quite heavily to one side. So if you've got a rider who is impinged in one hip, for example, as they come through the top of the stroke, um, their inability to raise the knee through the top of the stroke uh, essentially sends them off to one side because one way of opening the hip off opening hip up, sorry, would be to sit off to one side as a means of opening it up. Now, that has a tendency, in fact, that almost always causes saddle problems. So I actually had a lady in here recently who has a severely impinged hip, and she's, she's kind of of average height, but she has extremely limited mobility in this hip. And it was resulting in her listing to one side, and she's running 170s, I think. We went down to a 155 mil crank, which has meant that she, is now able to sit squarely on the saddle. Now, it's, it's a relatively short crank, but to be honest with you, this particular individual, she's not racing, she just actually, she her, her only um, goal is to ride a bike in comfort. And this reduction, this 15 millimeter reduction in crank length has enabled that. Sounds quite short, but it worked. Surely, James, if you want to ride your bike as fast as possible, you want the longest lever for the most leverage possible. If you're a machine, not a soft, squishy human being that has physiological limitations. And I think that's kind of what people don't see, don't really understand. Yes, absolutely, a longer crank will del deliver more leverage, but if you, at top dead center, if your hips are so impinged that you can't deliver any power, then that leverage is not really doing you a huge amount of good. If you've got a... Um, 
tall individual, let's say someone who's six foot two, and they've got like a, an 80 centimeter saddle height, and they're riding 165 millimeter cranks, the lever adjustment definitely starts to come into play because 165 millimeter crank is disproportionate. Think about it logically. Like, you should, so if you've got a really, really small person, 155 millimeter crank isn't necessarily too wacky or kooky. Likewise, I sell a reasonable amount of 180 millimeter cranks as well. You know, when you've got a guy who's six foot seven, six foot eight, a 175 millimeter crank can feel too short. Now, one of the ways that one of the things that we found with a crank length that's too short it makes the rider feel as though they're spilling into the front of the bike. Now, I don't necessarily understand why or know why, but it's something that I found through questioning and testing things um, that when the crank length is, is too short, riders actually end up with more pressure on their hands. So, suboptimal crank length can result in neck and shoulder issues numb hands, all this kind of stuff as well. Experimentation is key, really. You've got, you've got to go about it in an informed manner. Because if you try, so a lot of people, if they just, just try a different crank length, you've already emotionally invested in that purchase because you're not gonna get a, take it off, get a refund. So most people fit a short crank and go, oh, this feels amazing because they've spent all this money on it, so it has to feel amazing. Going about it in in, in a comparative way, comparative testing, so this, this crank on the jig here is, is adjustable. This is something that we change in every single fit. And you know, if you're, if you're having a bike fit, this is one of the keys to fitting on a, on a bike fit jig rather than fitting on a, on a rider's bike, um, because it allows us to make these changes very, very quickly and we can get feedback from the rider as to how it feels. We use this jig in, in every bike fit, book a fit with me or Andy, and um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to optimize crank length for you. But like I say, it's done in every single bike fit. But if you're looking for bike fit, I would encourage you to look for someone carrying out on a jig, but at the same time, Jig doesn't necessarily mean it's a good bike fit. That's great, man.